Ma'am, people are about to die. You're having an emotional breakdown. Can we deal with this later? Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Sweet Home. We are now on season three, episode six. So the last episode, we had a lot of reunions, a lot of people meet up again after a long time. We had Unyuk and, Un and Unyu, who, uh, well, Unyu's been looking for Un Unyuk since season one, or season two, I should say. So finally reunited, but it is not the Unyuk that she knew. And of course, at the same time, we had Unyuk meeting up with Hyunsu, but it's not the real Hyunsu. So they battled it out whilst dealing with the fact that the one of the neo-humans tried to trap them inside of a bus that they were fighting in. And uh, we see that in the end, my man Hyunsu Su did manage to break out of that situation, but we see that with Unyu, things are still very tense with her because now she feels like there's Hyunsu who's been taken over by the monster and now her brother who's not acting like her brother. So she says she's gonna still try to fight to get the real versions of them back after everything. We'll see if she's successful or not. Uh, Captain, sorry, Sergeant Kim met up with the soldier and the crazy lady. They headed back to the stadium, but we see that they figured out immediately that things were not right there. So they're choosing not to go in. And then inside the stadium, we see on Unfortunately, we lost Lee Kyung again. <laughs> and um, the changeling, AKA Sungwon, tried to jump into his daughter's body, but she rejected him. So he's desperate now to make it happen because the body he's in has been wrecked. But we see that uh, Isu, the young girl is a name now, she managed to break out. And I think she did it by turning the little boy into a monster. So, but lots of questions still to be answered and we're getting close to the crux time here. So I'm ready to jump into the episode. So let's do that. Just before we do though, our mind that if you'd like to be in the know of when I do reactions to this show or anything else, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you'll be in the know. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. So I thought, is this Why'd you do what? Hmm. Well, you said it, you're Hansu, are you not? You and Hansu are one and the same. That's the famous Korean, I've just been hit by a car pose. I'm you. Mm. Just those emotions, exactly, that you've never accessed, or at least not let yourself feel. Exactly. The two of you just need to work together, bro. I mean, both of you should be able to be awake at the same time. That's the thing. Can we work on that? Your strength with Hyunsu's empathy? Can we have that? Like, don't you need to be complete? <sighs> Whatever. See the way that Hyunsu knows how to just play a little bit of arrogance without too much? Uh, what now? Now you want to you want to hang back? We had to lose Lee Kyung over her. We could have had a Nuna romance. Maybe he doesn't want to. Getting to them civvies. Today's night, we are going to the to the Someone is definitely going to snitch. You know you got snitches in your mid, right? You know this? Some of them were like, I can't read. He went because he wanted to. You didn't make him go. He wanted to go. Trust me, girl. If he didn't want to go, he wouldn't have gone. And also, if you just give up, then isn't his going out for nothing? Right? It's like, I'm sorry, sis. He died getting you them damn pills. You gonna get them pills. You think they're gonna let you go? Right? Like, I thought you were smart. So how are you gonna capture her then? Can someone give this man chapstick for the love of God? I said I don't like them. I didn't stutter. You go. I don't trust that nut bar of a girl. I'm sorry. I know she's sober now, but she's also detoxing. 
God, oh God, what are you looking for? What, what, would you do? what did you do all that ridiculous damage for? She's fine. So that was what was making her sick, whatever he just pulled out? Do you want this there? So he put it in her? I'm so confused. Frack. He did see the boy. So he knows that the son from last season, and he couldn't figure out how he turned because his symptoms weren't the same. They found her. Young Maria. I forgot he wanted to be a monster, but a neo human version. <laughs> You're the dummy who didn't take it out of his hands when he still had it. Anyway. Bro, you literally can stick your fingers down his throat and get it at back if it's that deep. Is that the boy with the green stuff? She's on a revenge plot, and I love it. I mean, those poor people, but they were coming to get her, so. Mm. Meaning, they can't be created. I was about to say, is smoking the best thing to do right now? But you know, a whole chunk is missing out of his abdomen. What could be worse, right? Throw cancer on top of it. So are we gonna just squash this beef or? Okay, right back at you. They were coming anyway. Oh yeah. FYI. You're gonna be in charge of this place. Probably very stern. Protect. Hmm, right. You really can't be worse than what you've already been, is basically what he's saying. It's so sad that it took all of that for these two to just have a nice heart to heart, you know? It's so nice of Hyun Su to be walking with them. He could literally fly, shave hours off this trip. Yeah. Jesus, does this girl have a concussion? Now what? If one of these men have to carry you, I swear to God. Okay. Ma'am, people are about to die. You're having an emotional breakdown. Can we deal with this later? Is she symptomatic now, if that's what it is? I'll carry you. Yeah, sis, it's just sounding like a goodbye, so get to the point, right? This is not smooth if you're trying to make it smooth. Eunyuk already says he knows. He already says he knows that everyone's going to be a monster at some point, so he doesn't care. He's going to think it's a good thing. Gonna be real, I'm kind of happy that she's not gonna be here for the rest. We've had enough. Let us miss you. They don't. Yeah, I think he's dumb. He, he's always been pretty smart. Right? Y'all keep forgetting monsters are literally the safest people in this world. Might be a little both. 
I'll just come back, okay. Right. <laughs> right? He's like, I thought we went through this. I just said I'd be reborn. Right? I'm like, but this is a circular conversation. Don't investigate. Just keep walking. I knew we were, we're gonna lose him. He's been getting a lot of a lot of close-ups and screen time. Mm, told you to mind your business. See, this is why you need black friends. And you can't even run. That's Yunsu. She turned him into slime. Okay. Yunsu Yogi. Yunsu. took on a form like the slime that helped him back in the apartments back in season one. I'm gonna need you to get it together, sis. At least Miss Cha's chill. See, she would have been happy if her daughter at least had, had the chance to be a monster. Her daughter just died. I'm just gonna scoop up my boy here. No, nothing to say here. Hmm, think so, hey? Bring your army, now's the time, sis. He doesn't have a conscience anymore, kiddo. If you're still in there, now's the time to fight, bro. I know you've been sleeping for a while, but I need you to just come back and whoop this man's ass a few times on the inside again. Priest. He was such a badass. Sad we lost him. So many cool people from season one. So you turned all those guys for what exactly, Isu? Disappointing, Isu. Anyway, that was a waste of time. I mean, I get it. She's never really had to battle before. She's never even had to really delve into her powers in earnest before, but girl, we need to talk to you about having a plan. Stop, Aisha, she's only a year old. Remember, she's a year old. She has not had enough time in the world to be as depraved and diabolical as her father. Anyway, it's just sad that, I mean, I kind of like that she's on this revenge tip, but I really wish she had tried to run further away. There's more monsters, bigger ones that she could have controlled that would have given her dad a little bit more of a run for his money. Like these might be monsters, but they're human kind of too. So, okay. Anyway, yeah, this episode, um, pretty chill for the most part. Again, I feel like we didn't get a lot of movement here. Uh, we really, I guess the main point here is that Onyu is apparently going through monsterization. The show chose not to give us any of her, like not having her have any symptoms, right? No nosebleeds that we saw. She just started hearing voices, which we, this is the first episode that we've seen this. So I don't know if it's because it's just started or it was starting before. Very interesting, but it's an interesting, I don't know why. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to decide why the show does certain artistic choices. And I don't see the point of turning on you at this point. I really don't. Like, again, we know now that none of this monsterization is permanent because we know that Hyun Su has the ability to reverse it if he really wants to. But again, we don't know if it works with every monster though. Like we know that he was able to stop. Like for example, the first time we saw it last season with the weird uh, IV monster, he didn't return him to being human. He just got him to stop attacking him. That was it. So I don't know that Hyun Su can turn every monster back. Maybe it's just the ones that were turned forcibly by Isu. But yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm just not sure why Onya is becoming a monster at this point, I guess is my point. Although last episode, we did hear Onya say that in his, his, what would you even call it? His prediction is that everyone at some point is going to monsterize. Yes, he believes that everybody <clears throat> is going to become a monster at some point, And he thinks that it's either they're going to be the type of monsters you've been seeing since season one, the ones that are distorted and completely out of their minds, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or they're gonna be neo-humans. So he's not surprised. And of course we're seeing, he doesn't seem to really care much about the fact that he's turning. She's turning, but I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm team Unyuk on this one. Like a little bit because I don't like Unyuk's character, which I think everyone has picked up on by now. <laughs> but also because it's just like, you know, here's Hyun Soon, like, well, I'll carry you. Oh my God, oh my God. And Unyuk's like, bro, if she's turning into a monster, she's fine. Like. 
she unless a really big monster shows up, like one of the giant, like the protein dude that can like rip people apart, even though protein's dead now for real, real. But you get my point. Unless it's a monster of that, that magnitude, most of them will not be able to kill her. She'll heal up, she'll heal from anything that they do to her. And like you said, she'll she'll evolve into something that can either defend herself or she's a neurohuman, human, she'll just come back. So it's gonna be fine. One way or another, we can't worry about her anymore. She's gonna slow us down because we know the monsterization, it takes a toll on the body, right? So I think he's got the right idea at the moment. Like, again, we know that Hyun Su has emotional feelings towards her. That's why he's so worried. But, you know, I gotta be Team Unyuk on this one. Like, we got bigger fish to fry. We got a bunch of people at that stadium. You've got Sun Wook, who's about to literally turn into a... a, a a monster demigod if we don't stop him. We've got that little girl to protect. They don't know that Lee Kyung's gone yet. So they think they're gonna save her. Like there's just so many things on the list that they need to do, that they need to be focused on doing, that they don't have time to be worrying about East, uh, about uh, Unyu going through her change. Like she'll be fine. She's not weak completely. Like, I mean, I keep, I, I know I complain about the fact that people be rescuing her all the time, but like she's not completely useless, right? I think she's smart enough at this point to probably find some place that's fairly isolated, like a building, a room in a building or a car or something and just wait it out over there until they come back for her, right? Like that's all she needs to do at this point. And because she's monsterizing, she's probably going to be left alone. So like, leave her alone. I was saying earlier in the episode, her going along for this little field trip was actually gonna be more of a hindrance than not because she's human, she's fragile. She's there with a bunch of, of uh, neo-humans that are very deadly. Like she would not be an asset at this point, honestly. So I'm kind of glad she's just gonna chill, go through her monsterization and let these two do what they need to do. Because with Unyu or Unyuk, we found out he doesn't have any special power, right? Like we kind of confirmed that last episode. He is faster, he is stronger, but he doesn't have any type of monster, uh, non-human looking, I guess you could say, monster abilities. So he's effectively just gonna have to move really quickly. And we saw he's very good at dodging and moving so that part will be helpful to a degree but outside of that he doesn't have any real offensive capability so you know but at, at least we know like he said if I die it's not a big deal I'll come back right so I'm not that worried so that kind of takes a little worry out of it for for Hyun Su and then for Hyun Su obviously he's able to attack and do what he needs to do so like I said those do those two make sense to go to the stadium it never made sense for Unyo to go so even though it's because of the monsterization I'm just glad there's a reason she's hanging behind so these boys can just do what needs to be done without having to worry about protecting her overzealous ass every two minutes. So um, as far as the other stuff, we saw that she was clearly trying to reach out and get her brother to like remember things. And she wants him to relearn his emotions because she wants him to care about her again. Again, we hear later on that when she's talking to Hyun Soo, she's like, hey, if I end up like him, I don't want to be like him. So make sure that you try to make me remember how to feel things. And we see that Hyun Soo remembers this when he got frustrated with him because, you know, he's trying to be like, hey, she's your sister, you should care. And he's like, we're not even blood related. And then we see that Hyun Soo gets upset with him because he's like, like you should care. And obviously this would mean a lot to Hyun Su because he's literally lost his entire family, which, you know, back to season one, he knows what it is to lose everybody. So that's gonna be a real triggering thing for him to hear someone be so frivolous about that. But in the end, he asked him, he's like, is your, like this lack of emotion, he's like, is that really because of the monsterization? Or are you choosing not to feel anything? And of course, Anya gives nothing away. I do think it's a middle of both, to be honest. But as I said, we know that he still has the photo. So he's not, I don't think he's faking. I do think his emotions are dulled, but they're obviously not gone. So anyways, and I do think he is enjoying hurting Unyu a little bit because Unyu was absolutely horrible in, in season one. Like, I'm sorry, some people may have forgotten, but I have not. She was not a fun little sister to have at all. She was ungrateful and mean and hurtful to him all the time. And the reason she did that is because she knew that he wasn't going to abandon her. So yeah, he's getting a little bit of a lick back right now and I'm not mad at it, truthfully. Truthfully, I think he actually enjoyed the fact for that year when he was out there that he didn't have to worry about this girl who really never appreciated him. So anyway, I don't think that's going to continue. I think if she was in real mortal danger, he probably would act. But right now, as I said, it's a little bit petty and I'm here for it. So anyway, now those two are headed back to the stadium and we see that Hyun Soo gave him, let <laughs> she, he let Onyo keep a little piece of one of his shards as a weapon because he's like, look, he's like, you may be fast, you may be strong, but it's not gonna be enough. <laughs> not against what these guys, you've not seen what they're good, what they're capable of. So, oh, actually that's not true. He has seen, cause he was at the stadium. So I think he did see Spider Girl and Acid Boy. Yes, Acid Boy got to his face, that's right. But I don't think he saw what, um, I don't think he saw what Sangwon's capable of, not yet. So anyways, 
they're on their way, so good. Like it feels like they've been traveling for months, but yes, they're on their way, <laughs> finally. And then back at the stadium, we see that uh, we'll talk about really quickie Isu. She's been turning anybody that gets close to her. And I noticed that they're not the same as you noticed when she did it last season, they actually took on monster-like like physical features. I noticed with these ones, it's like she just turned them into zombies. Like all of them still looked human. So interesting. I don't know if it's because she can't, well actually no, because she turned the little boy into the jelly thing. He turned, I think he's a green. Like that's what, when they were categorizing them, he turned into a green monster. I'm not surprised though, cause he's not really a hurtful person. He was just hurt-ing, right? He was hurting, not a hurtful person. But anyway, um, she just turned herself, she created a little army of zombies, which helped to take care of all the humans. But she definitely underestimated how much impact they would have on her dad. Like, hello, he has tentacles. <laughs> As we saw, he basically went for all their brains at once. So all of those turnings for what, right? All those people are now dead for what? Although they might heal from it. We'll have to see. I'm not sure if killing the, I don't know. If, I don't know if taking out their brain will kill them. We'll, we'll find out. But yes, so he's out there. Now he's absolutely angry, by the way. The other reason why Sangwon is so upset is because he discovered through TAC today that he thought that special infectees were something that could be created. He thought it was like this next evolution, but it turns out that like he thinks in his mind that he like, he's like some next stage in this monsterization that, you know, he hit it first and then other people hit it after. But he found out that it actually the scientist took his blood and injected it into these other infectees. And for some of them, they ended up being like him. So now that he found out that he really, he really is the only one other than Hyun Soo, because Hyun Soo evolved on his own as well, that made him angry because now he's, he was really thinking he was gonna raise like an army of people like him. And now knowing the only way to do that is with his blood, you know, that just makes him realize that no, like there's no, like you are special in a way, but it's not something that happens to everyone. Like you and Hyun Soo are two in like billions who developed this way. So it's not gonna be an army is the point, right? He's going to be in the minority. So he's frustrated about that. He's mad that he was taken on a ride by this doctor again. Uh, he should know by now though, but anyhow. So that's one of the reasons he's being extra petty with Isu right now. But yeah, so that's what's going on with them. Then going back to Sergeant Tack, uh, him and Kim reunited, which was nice. They had a really nice heart to heart. Very nice to see after how much they butted, head la butted heads last season. They both have a lot of respect for each other now. And basically Tack came clean and was like, yeah, I'm symptomatic. So I think that was his way of saying without saying that I'm gonna have to pass the torch to you because you know once this switch is flipped, I can't lead everybody anymore. But I really like that by this point, Kim's like, I need you to just hold it together until we try to get out of here, right? <laughs> He's like, if you're gonna be on the monster, so be it at this point. Point, that's not even the worst thing that could happen to you. And at least you're still trying to help us. So he's like, look, just hold out. He's like, if you're going to become a monster, wait until we're like on the brink of getting the hell out of here. And then if anything, you know, that's when you turn into a monster and give us one last hurrah, please. And I really like that he said, you're a soldier. So if you turn, I feel like you're either going to be something that kills or protects. It's going to be one or the other. I think it'll be both. So anyhow, I do. I think Tax going to be green. Honestly, I think he's had enough time to kind of make peace with his demons, if that makes sense. So anyway, and also he's staved off. Like, I don't think he's had a, sur a resurgence of the monster side of him in like what seems like weeks. So anyhow, that's what's going on with them. The soldiers are still trying to gather all the people who want to try to escape together so they can wait for the big bonfire to try to run away. Yeah, there's not much to say about that because that was just that initiative. We saw the sick girl and we all know that, does he? Yeah, well, Kim's supposed to have her medication. I don't know if you remember to grab it, but anyway, that would make that the whole story from season two come circle, full circle if that happens and yeah we saw we lost Miss Cha which was a bit sad but she really didn't have a storyline this season to be fair like it kind of ended last season you know when she lost her daughter she kind of became the adoptive mother to the kids but then when the the other girl died last season and now the boy's kind of pushing her away and now with him being a monster you know what I mean like she really just doesn't have a role anymore they never really gave her a story outside of being a caregiver for these kids in the absence of her daughter so even though she was a cool character at this point I kind of get why they took her out because like I said she really doesn't have a purpose in this storyline anymore so RIP to her though she was really cool and she really did try to take care of that little boy and I do think he loved her and I just think it's sad that most likely one of the last things he said to her was probably not very nice. But anyways, he's still there, a big old puddle of goo. So at least, you know, he can't be killed easily. So I guess that's one of the benefits out of this whole situation. And I think that's pretty much all we got this episode, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We, like I said, it kind of felt a bit fillery. We didn't really move forward plot wise. Oh, outside of the doctor as well. The, ma 
mad scientist. He swallowed the last vial of uh, the blood that he put, or sorry, the last vial of San Juan's blood. I don't know, like that girl, was that what she kept feeling? I'm, I'm, a, I'm thinking that's what she kept. Did he put it in her? I'm trying to figure out how it got in her is my point. Like obviously he injected her with it at some point, but that would have been in her bloodstream. So how did the vial get in the girl? That's what I want to know. But she's been holding her side for since she got there and she wasn't doing it before. So we saw that the doctor took a long ass time about leaving, right? We saw that he saw her do the whole arm thing and kill everybody. He went and set up the blood transfusion for, for Kim. So somewhere in there, he must have put the vial in her. That's what I'm thinking. Cause he needed, that's maybe that's why he did it. He needed a way to smuggle it in. Cause he didn't want it to be in the same car probably with someone. Yeah, okay. But why did she agree? She must've, cause there's no way he would have gotten close enough to her to do that. So she must have agreed to carry it in for him. Yeah, that's gotta be it. Or she, had, yeah, no, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, that's what, that must be what happened. He must have asked her to do it, told her some story and got her to put it in her because he knew she'd heal up and not leave a scar. And then that's why she's been hurting the last couple of days because it's been sitting inside her body and her body keeps trying to get rid of it. That makes sense. And then he tried to get it out now, got it. Huh, which makes me wonder, what would he have told her to convince her to let him do that? Questions, guess we'll have to wait till she comes to to find out. But anyways, so he swallowed that now because now that he found out that Isu can turn humans into monsters, we find out that the other ma main reason the mad scientist has been doing what he's doing is because he wants to be a monster himself. He sees all the benefits, he wants to be just like Sang Wan. he wants to be able to do whatever he wants, he wants to be invincible and he's been waiting to turn and it hasn't happened yet. Even though he thought he did everything he needed to, it hasn't happened. The one thing he didn't do was if obviously use Sang Wan's blood, but he said he was keeping it for himself so that if he did turn asymptomatic, he would take it so he'd become like Sang Wan and not like the other monsters. So he now swallowed it as like a last resort. Um, obviously he's going to pass it, right? Cause he swallowed it. So yeah, he now wants to have Isu turn him so he can finally do what he thinks he needs to do to become a neo-human. So yeah, that is another, another layer of side plot now. So yeah, as I said, not much in this episode, truthfully, like. Like we, we still don't have my man Hyun Su at the stadium yet. We still don't have Eun Yuk sorry, at the stadium. We lost a lot of people again. So I'm just wondering what we're gonna do in this next episode because we're really pro prolonging this whole body jumping situation. And it feels like we just kind of came circle. Like last episode, she almost escaped, got put back. This episode, she almost escaped, she's back. So yeah, I'm just curious, like what are we stalling for now? So like what's, what's gonna happen? We've got two episodes left. How are we gonna roll this out now? Are we gonna have an all out battle for the last two episodes? Like, I'm just really not sure how we're gonna wrap this up or if we're really just gonna get to the body jumping part by next episode. Cause I feel like if we have one more false start, I'm gonna be a little bit suspicious. So yeah, other than that though, it was still a good episode. A lot of emotional moments there. So I did enjoy that. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.